Why, thank you, Odie. This is going to be the best Christmas tree we've ever had. Right, Garfield? Well, that depends. It depends on what's under it. In fact, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. I've invited Mom, Dad, and Doc Boy over for dinner tonight. Liz is coming too, and she's bringing her parents. Oh, is there going to be enough food? Now, I want you to be on your best behavior, Garfield. You didn't exactly win Mrs. Wilson over when you let her canary Petey out the window. Mr. Wilson seemed pleased. Oh no, look at the time. We have to go to the grocery. Garfield, help Odie finish decorating the tree while I do the shopping list. <sighs> Must I do everything around here? Oh, very well. Odie, slide that box of decorations over here. <laughs> Little closer. Good, now stand back. <laughs> Now plug it in. No time to finish the tree. We have to run to the... Ta -da! Like they say, lazy is the mother of invention. You boys wait here. I'll be right back. Well, don't be long. You know how impatient I get when there's food in the vicinity. Oh, hi, Arlene. Hi, Garfield. What you doing? I'm gathering food and blankets for some abandoned animals at the old railway station. My, that looks heavy. Yes, it is. Bummer. Well, John's fixing a feast for the family tonight, and someone's going to be doing some major eating. No. Oh. And then tomorrow's Christmas, and we're going to open presents. And then we're going to be eating. And then we're going to open more presents. And then more eating and opening presents. Hey, where are you going? I had two more eating and opening of presents to go. You don't get it, do you? Get what? What the spirit of Christmas is all about. Well, there's the eating, and there's the opening of presents, and then there's... What, there's more? Yes, there's the caring and sharing. Ah, gotcha. Oh. Okay, you can come to dinner too. There's plenty to eat. And Odie will be happy to share his. You are so pathetic. Whoa. Now what? I invited you to dinner. If you want to truly understand what I'm talking about, come with me. There are those who are in need of shelter and food. Helping them is a good thing to do, especially this time of year. Hey, guys, let's hurry. It's cold out here. Well, I gotta go. If I don't see you, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Garfield. What? You know, Odie, I kind of feel like a heel. Maybe I should have helped Arlene care for those animals, but hey, what can I do? I'm only one cat. I'm only human. Huh? It's not like I can just take John's food down to the old railway station, right? Uh -huh. Will you stop that? Huddle up, people. There are a lot of you and not a lot of blanking. You know, Rags, I've always taken this whole heat thing for granted. <laughs> we take everything for granted until it's gone. Like food. <laughs> like food. I'm back. Woohoo! Arlene, what did you bring us? Well, 
the dumpster behind the store wasn't as generous today, but I did find this. Ooh, that looks soft. Oh. It looks so pretty. What do you have to eat? I'm starving. I'm afraid all I have is a little cheese and some biscuits. Oh. That's okay. You guys eat. I could stand to drop a few pounds. We don't have enough food to go around. What do we do? We aren't going to eat the food, Harry. You and I will have a nice meal when we get home tonight. This is for the animals who have no home. Ah, you're right. Now tell my tummy that. Or better yet, tell your fat friend that. Garfield? Who else? I'll bet he has a boatload of food around his house. We could live for a week on what he eats for a snack. I'm afraid Garfield isn't in the sharing mood this holiday season. Heh, <laughs> like he ever was. Well, as they say, a fat friend in need is a fat friend in need. Yeah. You didn't take John's dinner fixings, did you? Oh, no. We took stuff from the back of the refrigerator. That food hasn't seen the light of day for years. Oh, you are such a sweetie. Thank you, Garfield. <laughs> and you too, Odie. Are we quite done with the smooch fest? We have some hungry friends here. Garfield, Odie, I'd like you to meet Rags. He's been a resident of the railway station for many years now. You don't have a home? How do you survive? I have always relied upon the kindness of strangers. Where would you want to do that? Oh, I'd love to have a home. But nobody wants a big old dog. People want puppies and kittens. Right, guys! Whoa! Who are the kittens? <laughs> Their mother was an alley cat. She felt very ill, and it was her last wish that I care for her kittens until they found good homes. Garfield, Odie, I'd like you to meet Spring. Hi. Summer. <laughs> Sup, dog. And Autumn. How do you do? There are three of you? There are four. We had a brother, but he has already found a home. Spring, summer, and autumn. Let me guess. Would his name by any chance be Winter? No, it's Philippe. Winter. <laughs> What's wrong with that? What a dorky name. We have one more resident for you to meet, Garfield. Where? There. This is Nick. Oh, how do you do, Nick? Nick, be nice. I don't make nice with cats. Cats eat canaries. Only the mouthy ones. Hey, hey, that's it. Put them up. Put them up. Gladly. Uh, uh, boys, let's not forget why we're here. You're lucky she called me up, Fetzo. Hey, pick on someone your own size. Thank you, Arlene. For what? For encouraging us to help these folks out. It feels good. Who would have thought? It's a nice start. Isn't that true? We should find homes for them. Well, that's a pretty tall order. If people got to know them, I just know they'd want to take them home. But that's the problem. How do you get everybody together? <laughs> What is it, Odie? A junkyard. Okay, so what's your point? Junkyard, pile of junk, okay. <gasps> Oh, I get it. If we build a Christmas tree, people will come, like moss to a light. <laughs> and then, 
They'll meet the animals. And give them homes. Yes! You guys are nuts. Carlene, remind me to tell you about the true spirit of Christmas sometime. Huh? It's okay, I think you're a genius, Odie. Odie, you're a genius. they be? It's not like Garfield to be gone this close to dinner time. Oh no! Company's here! Garfield! Odie! Huh? <laughs> Mom! Dad! Merry oh. Christmas, John! Son? Doc Boy! Don't call me Doc Boy. <laughs> right. Doc Boy, Doc Boy. <laughs> Liz! Oh, happy holidays, John. Boy, you are looking absolutely... <laughs> Mrs. Wilson! Hello, John. And Mr. Wilson, uh, how are you today, sir? Just peachy. Which way to the eggnog? Oh. What a beautiful treat, John. Uh, thanks. Uh, um... Mom, Dad, Doc Boy, I'd like you to meet Liz's parents, uh, Robert and Betty. Hi. Well, how do you do? I'm fine, thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Liz has told us so much about you. So, uh, everyone have some hot cider and let's admire the tree for a while, okay? I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, I'm with that one. When do we eat? Robert. Oh, soon. Uh, but first, let's get to know one another. Oh, Mrs. Wilson, did you know Doc Boy slept with his blankie until he was 14? <laughs> Don't call me Doc Boy. And it was 13. <laughs> what do you think, Arlene? Interesting, but it needs something. A star. We need a star at the top. <laughs> Eureka! Nice going, Odie. Let's get this thing to the top of the heap. <laughs> I think everything's ready to go now. Are you sure this is going to work? Absolutely not. Are you with me, people? Yes! Very nice, everyone. Okay, uh, let's sing another song. Oh. Do we have to? We've been singing for a solid hour. John, can I give you a hand with dinner? No, everything's ready, Mom. I was just stalling until Garfield and Odie show up. Oh, no. It's not like Garfield to miss a meal. 
Wondered why it was so peaceful around here. I'm sure they're fine. Those rascals are probably up to something. I'm sure you're right. Okay, let's go into dinner. <gasps> what a lovely dinner, John. I'm so proud of you. If it tastes half as good as it looks, we're in for a treat. What was that? Huh? Uh, what was what? That noise came from the living room. I didn't hear anything. What the? <laughs> I don't believe it. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this isn't happening. Stop. Go forward, guys. The headlights have to shine higher. Wow. Well, folks, I guess our Christmas is over a little early. I'm sorry. Light the lights! Oh. Hurry, guys, there isn't much time. <laughs> Everybody ready? ready. <laughs> Why aren't they here? It was a nice idea, Garfield. It was sweet of you to try. See, I told you. <laughs> Garfield! Odie! You rascals! What are you doing here? This is truly a Christmas miracle. It must be for a reason. As a matter of fact, it is. <laughs> Who are your friends, Garfield? I had a canary named Petey. You remind me so much of him. I'm gonna take you home and name you Petey, too. Look, lady, I don't know what your problem is, but, uh, is that food? Oh, have some macadamia nuts. The macadamia nuts? You can call me Cynthia. And Garfield. Here I was so angry with you for letting Petey out the window, and now you've given me Petey, too. Ooh. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Can I have some more nuts? And just who are you? Yeah. Don't you have a home? <sighs> well, they need a home, Dad. A farm can always use more mousers. We can take the kittens. I love kittens. You're coming home with us. I don't think so, lady. 
We're not going anywhere without Rags. We're a family, a team, a set that can't be broken up. Time out. Come here, ladies. Listen to me. I promised your mother that I'd find a home for you, and that promise is going to be kept tonight. But your family. Yeah, this is our home. This is a junkyard. I am an old dog. I'm not going to be around for you a whole lot longer. On the farm, you'll have friends and real family. And one day, you'll have kittens of your own to care for. I can't offer you that here. Oh, but we love you, Rags. We're going to miss you. Yeah, we're going to miss you. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Now make your mother proud. you the sweetest thing? <laughs> Betty, what was the name of that big, dumb dog we had? Uh, are you talking about Junior? Yeah, Junior. Whatever happened to him? Well, he died ten years ago, Robert. That's right. Isn't his bed still in the corner of the garage? Mm-hmm, right where you insisted on leaving it. Seems like a shame to let that bed collect dust. Maybe we could use another big dumb dog. Oh, that's a lovely idea, Robert. Come here, boy. <laughs> oh, 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 whoa. When we get home, first thing I'm giving you is a bath. <laughs> <laughs> My, look at all those poor homeless animals. John, we have to do something. We can't possibly take care of all those animals, Liz. I'll take one. Vito, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? What's the whole town doing here? We all came to see the bigger tree. Hey, you want a job, doggy? You come to Vito's Pizzeria with me, yeah? I put you to work gardening my pizzas from a certain cat that I know. Hey, I resemble that remark. All the pepperoni you can eat. What do you say, dog? <laughs> hey, everyone, take a pet home with you. Come on, we have a pet parade. <laughs> ho, 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 whoa. Garfield? Sometimes you amaze me. Oh, you are the spirit of Christmas. <laughs> Arlene, you know, the spirit of Christmas is hungry. The food's getting cold, everyone. Come on, let's eat. Now that's a My generator bank is low. I need to find a place I can stop off for a day or two and recharge. Earth? What's to do on Earth? Most boring planet in the galaxy. Makes Trisector Blue seem like a bleen festival, if you know what I mean. Well, I guess it'll do. I mean, it's on the way. Hmm. <laughs> 
John will be home any minute now and he'll make dinner. I wish he'd hurry. I haven't eaten in <gasps> two hours, 15 minutes, and three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Here's John. He went to apply for cartooning work. You'll be able to tell by the look on his face if he got hired or not. Oh. Ooh, that looks like a knot to me. I'll have dinner on the table soon, guys. Oh, soon is not soon enough. Can you make soon sooner? No. I don't know why we're rushing him. Have you noticed how bad John's cooking has been lately? Especially when he's out of work and dejected. Sometimes it's hard to tell what it is he's serving. What do you think it is, boy? Meat, fish, or pasta? Hmm. I'm thinking chicken chow mein or maybe chocolate pudding. Or both mixed together. I think I need an emergency banana. There must be somebody out there who wants to hire a cartoonist. John Arbuckle. Arbuckle, Eddie Gourmand here. You know me. <laughs> the world's greatest food critic and all around cool person. Now listen, I was told you are a cartoonist. Y yes, I was. I, I mean, I am. Well, I need one I can pay a fabulous salary to to do drawings in my cookbook. Fabulous salary? But I have to ask you, Arbuckle, are you a good cook? You want to know if I'm a good cook? <laughs> I have some thoughts on the matter. Well, yes, I'm an excellent cook. Those are not my thoughts. Tell you what, I'll come to dinner tonight at your house. If I like what you serve, the job and the fabulous salary are yours. You have my address? Mm-hmm. Good, see you tonight at eight. Garfield, I'm going to get a job with a fabulous salary. I knew you could do it. All I have to do is cook a great dinner. I knew you couldn't do it. Now, what do I need? Oh, ingredients! I have to go to the market and buy ingredients! Uh, see you soon! <laughs> Even his bananas aren't that good. <laughs> Ugh. I forgot. They have gravity on this planet. Let's see what's around here. House! Trees? I better hide my spacecraft. You know how bad this is? Even I won't eat it. You're darn right that's pretty bad. That smell. That smells just like the corrugated uranium my mother used to make. Mm. Oh, delicious. Mm, 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 mm. You like that, fella? Highly obese cat. Best food I've had in the galaxy. Well, if you want more, the dog's not going to eat his either. <laughs> <laughs> Let me at it. You know, Odie, I've been hungry, but I don't think I've ever been that hungry. Let's see if John left any more of that stuff on the stove. The more of it our friend here eats, the less we'll have to finish. Mm, mm. Murray, I could get to like this Earth place if only it didn't have all this gravity. Yeah, gravity. Earth is lousy with it. We interrupt this Garfield cartoon to bring you this educational moment. Tell them not to worry, it'll be quick. Don't worry, it'll be quick. Thank you. This is for those of you who don't know what gravity is. Gravity is a natural phenomenon by which objects with mass attract one another. I'll repeat that because I don't understand it either. It has something to do with how big objects attract littler objects. The Earth is a big object, so smaller objects are attracted to it. History says that gravity was first figured out by a man named Isaac Newton back in the 17th century. They say it happened when an apple fell on his head. Well, that's not exactly how it happened. I say, old chap, how about a spot of dinner for your pussycat? Hmm, it would seem I have to take matters into my own paws. Apples. 
Well, they're not exactly lasagna, but they'll do. Ah, there we go. What happened? I was asleep and you fell down, my fine pussycat. Hmm. I wonder why you did not fall up. Could it be the force of gravity? And so, in conclusion, gravity is why things fall down and go boom. And so Isaac Newton formulated his theory of how gravity works. And why we do not all float away from this planet. He became world famous, and of course his cat didn't get a bit of credit. So that's what gravity is, and why it's a good thing to have. This concludes the educational portion of our program. Don't worry, we won't have another one until next season, or maybe the one after that. Our story resumes. I don't like all this gravity. All this walking on the floor. Without gravity, I feel so free. Time to use the old portable gravity elimination device. <laughs> oh, great! This is just like home. John had a cake in the oven? His last one was like lead. I hope this one is light. Hey, not bad. Huh? Oh. Oh. Odie, stop kidding around. You're a dog, Odie. Dogs can't fly. No, you can't. Any more than cats can fly. Which we can't do either, so stop floating around like that. Hody, is this one of those hokey dream sequences where we do on the show every once in a while? I don't either. Whoa. Hey, Odie, look. I'm not falling. Give it a try. Oh. I lost track of the time and spent too long at the market. I won't get home in time to cook Mr. Gorman the great meal that will give me that fabulous salary. Maybe Garfield and Odie will entertain him until I get there. Would you float over there and see who that is? Open up, Arbuckle, it's me! It's eight and I don't like being kept waiting at mealtime. <gasps> oh no, Mr. Groman is here already. I'll run around and go in the back door. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Garfield! Hey, John. I found something that's almost as much fun as sleeping or eating. My tomatoes, my carrots, my rutabagas. I think John's too heavy to float like this. Uh, I wonder if my generator bank is recharged yet. Arbuckle, what is going on? Arbuckle, is my dinner ready? This place is getting crowded. This might be a good time to go check. Better turn off the old gravity eliminator. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful job of setting the table. Huh? Huh? What a fine way of tossing a salad. What a bad way of landing on your head. Oh, Ooh. and look huh? at this stir fry. I can already see how perfectly yummy it will be after you heat it up. Heat it up? Oh, yes, heat it up. <laughs> I'm about to heat it up, Mr. Groman. Good. And I'll start on your splendid salad while you do. All charged up and ready to go. I keep telling you, Odie, I have no idea what happened. But I think I know who does. Hey, you. Yoo-hoo. I thought it might be you. What happened in the house? That was your doing. Guilty. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey, the food was great. If I come back someday, can I have that again? Can you make us float again? 
It's a deal. Bye. Bye. Whoa, that was amazing. I never would have believed it. No, not floating. Somebody liking John's cooking. Our bundle. Oh. This is delicious. The stir fry is ready, Mr. Gourmand. Oh, and it smells divine. You are so hired. I won't just pay you a fabulous salary. <laughs> I'll pay you a super fabulous salary. Yeah, two somebody's like John's cooking. Well, it just goes to show, Odie. Sometimes it all works out. Hurry back, my friend. I'm only a few days behind in my payments. I'm just waiting for a check from my employer. And my employer is waiting for a check from you, Arbuckle. Don't make me sue you. Oh, John's laid on a bill for something or other. That guy came by to demand payment. You'd really sue me? Over such a small amount of money? I'm a lawyer, Arbuckle. It's my job to sue people. Listen to my schedule for this afternoon. One o'clock, sue someone. Two o'clock, Sue someone. Three o'clock, go visit my cousin Sue. 3.30, Sue Sue. Four o'clock, stop at the market, buy a gallon of milk. 4.30, Sue the market, the dairy, and the cow the milk came from. Any questions? Nope. Tell me, Arbuckle, how is it you're always low on cash? Here you are, Mr. Arbuckle. Twelve pepperoni pizzas for your pussycat. Any questions? This is a baby kangaroo. Not as cute as me. And this is a baby panda. Definitely not as cute as me. <laughs> hey, what are you complaining about? I gave you a crust. Not as cute as me. <laughs> not as cute as me. All right, a half a crust. <laughs> Guys, I need to make some fast money. I'm going to have a garage sale. I need things to sell. Garfield, look around. Find things that we want to get rid of. Things that are utterly and totally useless. Huh, I love watching nature films on TV. Dawes, <laughs> <laughs> oh. after we drop my son at home, take me to the courthouse. Very well, Mr. Allwork. Who are you suing today? I don't know, but I'll find someone. Dad, could we maybe do something? I mean, you and me? I have work to do, Jack. Besides, I just picked you up at your baseball game. Yeah, and you sued the umpire. Oh, there's that Arbuckle fellow I may be suing. He seems to be having some sort of yard sale. Dawes, stop for a moment or I'll sue you. Let me so normal. Oh, let me so normal, please. Maybe I can get $3 for this old lamp. Why won't you let me sell normal? Garfield, while I go look for more junk, put price tags on everything. And remember, price things based on what they're really worth. There you go, Odie. What you're really worth. <laughs> Two cents. A lot of worthless junk. I may have to sue him over this. Hey, Dad! Look at the neat puppy. He's real cute, and he's only two cents. Do you want him, son? Maybe I can negotiate the price down to a penny. <laughs> Please, Dad. Oh, all right. Arbuckle, I'm buying this dog. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Allwork. Odie's not for sale. 
Yes, he is. He has a price tag, and I have agreed to pay the price specified on the tag. That's a legally binding contract. Honor it, or I'll sue you. Huh? I owe you two cents. Do you have change for a hundred? <laughs> oh, and I'll need a receipt. Oh. Look, I know he had a price tag on him, but it was just a joke. A joke? Sorry, Arbuckle. I know you're attached to this dog, but my son wants it, and I always give my son anything he wants. Yeah, as long as it doesn't take any of your time. Garfield, have you thought of anything, anything you can do to make this situation better? Uh, I marked Nermal down to a penny. Uh, Too bad about Odie. I always liked him. He was a little damp around the tongue, but he was a good dog. Hey, Squeak, you gonna finish that piece of cheese? I was planning. Why? Because John's not gonna feed me until I figure out how to get Odie back. Ah! Squeak, do you think you and the Mouse Network could figure out where they took the pooch? Leave it to me, Goff. I'd do anything for you. Anything? Make that almost anything. Forty-seven Barrister Lane. That's in the fancy part of town. No oh, figures. I got it from an upper-class rodent. So how do you figure to get the guy to give Odie back? I shall employ a brilliant plan. I hope I have one by the time I get there. Throw the stick and you fetch it. Uh -uh. Wanna go for a run? Uh -uh. <sighs> Whoa, nice place Odie gets to live in. If you're wondering, I still don't have that brilliant plan. Oh, it's you. Hmm. Did you come to try to get the dog back? <laughs> well, Mr. Allwork gave explicit instructions. The dog now belongs to his son, Jack, and that's final. <gasps> hmm. <laughs> no, you are not a little girl come to play with Master Jack. You are that pussycat again. Good day. Hey, uh, Mr. Butler, sir. Uh, it's me, Avito, here to deliver a pizza to the little boy uh, and the uh, papala with the wet tongue. No, you're not a pizza delivery man. You're still that pussycat. Good day. <laughs> no, you are not the abominable snowman. Eh, it was worth a try. You're that pussycat again. You forced me to use our state-of-the-art security system, which fortunately includes an abominable snowman catapult. John needs to get one of those. You never know when an abominable snowman is going to come around. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get Odie back. I don't even know where I got those costumes. Huh? Hey, he left that upstairs window open. Okay, it's not a brilliant plan, but it's close. You don't want to do anything with me, do you, puppy? Uh -uh. I didn't need a dog for that. I could get that from my dad. Huh? You miss where you used to live, don't you? <laughs> well, that's where you should be. Come on, I'll take you home. <laughs> Well, 
appears that pussycat had the good sense to give up and leave. Now to find Odie. Oh, no, he did not. He's climbing into the master bedroom. Now to run from the butler. <laughs> 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 no, I'm going to sue you, and that's that. Fine. See you for dinner Sunday night, Mom. <laughs> What does this mean? I don't know, but I'll bet I get sued. <sighs> I'm dreadfully sorry, Mr. Orwork. This pussycat breached security, and now I see that young Jack is missing. Also, the dog you bought him. Missing? Well, it's obvious where they are. Get the car outdoors. And you, cat. They're coming with me. Oh, nothing's going right. Even with the garage sale, I still don't have enough money to pay off that bill. Garfield's gone, and I may have lost Odie forever. Maybe not forever. Uh, Odie, you're back! <laughs> I'm never going to let you get away from me again. You'll have to. They don't let you have dogs in prison. Mr. Olwork! I bought that dog fair and square. Dad? Not now, Jack. You stole him back, and I'm calling the police and having you charged with grand theft puppy. But, Dad? Quiet, Jack. Don't make me sue my own son. I'll do it if I have to. Hey, let the kid get a word in edgewise. Dad, I gave the dog back to him. Why? I thought you wanted that dog. What is it you really want? Why won't he answer me? What is it he really wants? Whatever it is, I, I can afford it. A dog is great, but he's no substitute for a parent. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right. Mr. Olwork, you asked me to remind you those people you needed to sue? They can wait, Dawes. I need to spend more time with my son. What's it gonna be, son? Ball game? Movie? Anything! Arbuckle, uh, that bill you owe, uh, don't worry, we'll work out something. And thanks. Thank you. Well, I still have to figure out a way to make some money. <laughs> I know, I know. You're going to suggest selling normal. Huh? No? Oh, I'm sorry, Garfield. Well, what is your idea? <laughs> what? We'll give him away, then charge people to take him back. We'll make millions. Millions, I tell you. Millions. Welcome to those of you in sorry need of education. Today we will explore the history, the legend, of the most superior animal on the entire planet. <laughs> Not even close. Of the one million species that inhabit this planet, none elicit or deserve more respect and admiration than the cat. Sore loser. Clearly the cat, known scientifically as Felice Catus is the most regal animal on the earth. We can trace the history of the cat back to prehistoric times, a time when saber-toothed cats roamed the land. The mighty saber-tooth was master of the land, a great hunter, 
graced with keen senses of sight, hearing, and smell. When he spotted a delicious-looking prehistoric mouse, his feline instincts sprang into action. As his primitive cat cravings took over, he became a crazed beast and nothing could stop him. Sadly, the saber tooth was wiped out 13,000 years ago. Here's our next lesson. In ancient Egypt, cats were worshipped as gods and goddesses, as well they should be then and now. <sighs> we worship you. We adore you. We love your hat. You rock. Thank you, thank you. Really, you shouldn't. But what am I saying? Yes, you should. And now we dance. <laughs> Ah, those were the good old days. Back when they knew how to treat a cat right. Hey, check this out. Back in the Middle Ages, the King of Wales proclaimed that cats were not only cute and clever, but also valuable. From this day forward, I decree that all cats are to be honored and protected. They are cute, clever, and most important, they are excellent at catching mice. Oh, hey, huh? get him off. Notice how cats love to eat mice. <laughs> Relax, I'm not gonna eat you. Thou shalt not? No, just playeth along. <laughs> so began the myth that cats eat mice. Huh? Of course not. Use what little common sense you have, Pooch. Here's a mouse. Here's a pizza. Which one would you rather eat? It would be wrong, very wrong, to think the only value of a cat is to rid the world of mice. In fact, cats have been behind, if not directly responsible for, some of the greatest moments in history. For instance, back in the Arabian desert a long time ago. Here, my cat, I have packed your food in these handy bags made from the lining of a sheep's stomach. In here are some mice. Oh, yummy. Mice for me to eat. And this one is some goat's milk. Whew, that's a little better, but not much. Couldn't we stop off for Chinese food? The nearest place is only 3,000 miles away. Huh? Enough nomading for one day. We stop here. Boy, was it a hot one today. Since I'm not about to eat mice, I guess I'm stuck with this goat's milk. <laughs> Hey, something's wrong with this stuff. Hey! It's solidified into ripened curds of soured milk. Does anyone have a cracker? Yes. <sighs> oh, no. oh, triple yum. I believe I've just invented a new food. Hey, give me some of that. This is a great invention. I shall call it cheese. Now he's giving cats credit for inventing cheese. That's ridiculous. Everyone knows cheese was invented by a mouse. But aside from inventing cheese, cats have made other great contributions to the world. For instance, Florence, Italy, 1503. The guy at the easel is Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, yes. I can see it coming together and now. Not what you'd call a masterpiece. <laughs> stop! Gato! Stop, little Topo! You will ruin the great painting I am doing, which is destined to hang forever in the galleries of the world! <laughs> My beautiful painting! Hey, calm down, Lenny. <laughs> it's not a that wonderful. I could paint a better painting with my tail. Now, what the shall I paint? I know, your sister Shirley. 
terrible. But the people who buy art have so little a taste. Good God, though, good. What can I give you as a reward? Well, hundreds of years ago, my ancestors in a vent of cheese. I was wondering if you, being Italian, of course, could combine it with tomato sauce and layers of flat pasta noodles and then bake for, say, one hour in a 350-degree oven? Ah! Now a cat created lasagna! Ow! And painted the Mona Lisa! 1804, the study of the great composer Ludwig van no, no, Beethoven. No, 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 nine, nine, nine. It's all wrong! Ah, hello, Amideus. Have you caught any mice today? <laughs> Again. Hmm. Ba 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 What's all this talk about cats doing this and cats doing that? You make it sound like cats have done everything good. Hey, I can't rewrite history, can I? That's all you've been doing here. <laughs> Tell him the truth, Garfield. Well, it's mostly happened like... The truth, or we'll let John know how many pizzas you put on his credit card last month. All right, all right. <sighs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, there were a few details I left out of the stories I just told you. Hey, something's wrong with this stuff. It solidified into ripened curds of sour milk. Stop it. Tasty! Ow. I think I died and gone to heaven. Tasty! I think we should call this stuff cheese. <laughs> cheese? Why? Because uh, it looks more like cheese than anything else I can think of. Okay, everyone, let's record this moment in history. Everyone look at me and say, cheese! And that story about Leonardo da Vinci? Well, it was true what I said, sort of. She's a ruined! <laughs> Yeah, sure looks to that away. Maybe you should try painting clowns or Elvis on black velvet. Hey, I know how to fix that. Actually, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Hello. Yeah, he's here. It's for you, the Louvre in Paris. They heard about your new painting. News travels it fast in the world of art. The Louvre? The Louvre? Why, that is the greatest art museum in the world. Little Topo, I want to reward you. I want to cook something wonderful for you. Well, I had this idea for something called lasagna. Lasagna? No. No one will ever want to eat something called uh, lasagna. Who knew? And then that story about Beethoven and his Fifth Symphony? Oh my goodness, there is a mouse in here! Boy, for a guy who doesn't hear so good, he's good at hearing mice. <laughs> hey, take it outside, fella. <sighs> now I have to chase him, I guess. No, oh, it's no use. I do not even know how to start my fifth symphony. Maybe I should skip it and move on to my sixth. Right. That is it. Da, 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 da. Genius. Thank you, little mouse. Thank you. So you see, though cats have made their contribution to history, so have mice. Garfield. Was terrific. We misjudged you. You're a pretty honest cat. Yeah, it takes a big cat to do something like that. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks for so long. No, of course we're not going to put that stuff about mice on the air. We'll edit it out and just show the part about how great cats are. Oh. 
This DVD is the show we just did. I'm supposed to send it to the network so they can broadcast it to the whole country. But I won't. That one goes in the trash. Instead, I'm sending them this one, in which I edited out all of my stuff and just left in the part about how great cats are. No, it's not unfair. It's just sneaky. Besides, name me one smart thing mice have ever done. Well, for one thing, we're really good at switching videos. <laughs> dinner on the table. I'll be right in with the lasagna, guys. Be careful, it's very hot. I don't care if it's hot, just as long as it's here. Yuck, Yuck. is putting it mildly. <clears throat> Instead of this, could we, like, uh, have some food, please? I'm sorry you don't like it. It's Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. I didn't have time to make fresh. Can you live with it? <laughs> all right, all right. Get in the car. We'll go to Vito's. Mm. Vito, you're the master. And I tell you, this is a lot better than Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. So is appendicitis. Oh, thank you. But the true master was a man who taught me how to cook, the great Giuseppe Squisito. He made the best lasagna in the world. He was your teacher? He was my teacher, my mentor, my hero. The greatest Italian chef who ever molded a meatball. We were so fortunate, those of us who got to train under him. You call yourself a chef. I should make you all and turn in your soil to aprons. Tell me, what are the two most important ingredients in anything you cook? Your heart and your soul. I can hear you. Your heart and your soul. Until you learn that, you will never be worthy of the honor of being called a chef. If only I could hear him call me that. Well, invite him. I'm sure he... Oh, no, 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 he retired, uh, disappeared long before I opened the Vitos here. No one knows where he is, or even if he is still among us. Hmm. Quiet, Ori. Many a night, I dream of him seeing it, tasting my marinara and saying, Vito, you are a chef. Ah, but it will never happen. Hey, let me get you some of Vito's world-famous thick crust pizza, eh? Vito's a good guy. I hope someday he sees that Chef Squisito again. The best lasagna in the world. The best lasagna in the world. The best lasagna in the world. The best lasagna in the world! The best lasagna in the world! I've gotta have it! I've gotta have it! I've gotta have the best lasagna in the world! Squeak! Wake up! Wake up, Squeak! Garfield, you woke me up, right? You made a love of keys dream. 
Squeak, I need your help. Aw, it was about cheddar. That's my favorite. Squeak, I need you to alert the mouse network. I have to find a chef named Giuseppe Squizito. Ugh, can't it wait till morning? Sure. <laughs> All right, it's morning. Find him. He's the man who makes the best lasagna in the world. on the table. How do you expect me to eat this when the best lasagna in the world is out there, just somewhere waiting to be eaten? <laughs> hey, I have to keep my strength up. Garfield, Garfield, my friend Irv here found him. Tell him, Irv. You're uh, looking for Chef Giuseppe Squizito? Desperately. Well, I moved. I now live in a cheese factory. Lucky guy. And Chef Squizito, he comes in all the time to buy mozzarella, ricotta, and parmesan. <gasps> the three basic ingredients in the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Take me to him. Take me to him right now. Can we walk faster? He lives in a shack out this way. Why are we going all the way out here, Garfield? Because I must have the best lasagna in the world. That's it. He lives there. Thanks. OK, you guys can go home. I'm going to go eat the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Kitty cat, what do you want? Ah, 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 ah. Do you want the lasagna? Meow. The best lasagna in the world? <laughs> no. So you think Garfield will get lasagna? Garfield always gets lasagna. <sighs> yeah, I know I look stupid, but there's nothing I won't do for the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Down here, Tiny. A little bambino left on my doorstep. Are you hungry, a little baby? Yeah, hungry. Then I get you the most delicious food any baby would want to eat. <laughs> Here we come. The best. <laughs> Baby food made out of turnips and oatmeal. <laughs> Do not cry, little bambino. Squizito will find you something you will like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't laugh. You used to sound just like this. <laughs> Here, a little one. You will like this. Hmm, this is not working out. I need to find some paper. What am I going to do? I cannot keep a baby around here, even a homely, fuzzy one. How can I find it's a mother? <laughs> a note? I did not notice a note there before. If you find this baby, please feed it the best lasagna in the world, his mother. No, I do not think a lasagna is a healthy food for little babies. Then, return him to 150 West Central Avenue. Come, my little bambino. I take you back to your mother. Are you sure you don't want to grab a quick bite before we do this? This is 150 West Central Avenue. Vito's Pizzeria? You live here, a little baby? 
Yep. Uh, uh. <laughs> Chef Esquisito! Oh, Chef Esquisito, it is you! Do you not remember me? Vito Capelletti, I was one of your students. Vito Capelletti, one of my worst students. You were the one who tried putting spaghetti on a barbecue. <sighs> Yes, but uh, I learned. I learned from you. And, and now I have my own restaurant. Uh, please, uh, taste my tagliatelle. Uh, sample my spumoni. I would not soil my taste buds with your cooking. <sighs> but I am a good cook now. For... You could not possibly be a... Hey, that's not a bad meatball. You... You like it? In fact, it is a very good meatball. Tell me, how is your cannelloni? My cannelloni? It is, uh, it's a... Uh... It is, uh, on the way. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I have here a nice cannelloni for you. Ah, I want you to try my fettuccine Alfredo. Oh, and you must try my chicken marsala and my garlic bread. Vito, you truly are a chef. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, grazie, maestro. Uh, thank you. And you, pussy gato, I am in your debt for making this happen. How can I show my appreciation? <laughs> Garfield, I don't know how you did it. You actually got Chef Squizito to come here and prepare uh -huh. his world-famous lasagna for us. I have not cooked in many years, not since I retired. I sold my recipe to a company that markets it as... Ah, it is already. Woohoo! Ah! Wow! Here you are! Joe's a frozen a microwave lasagna. Uh, Chef Squizito. I don't know how to tell you this, but we tried Joe's frozen microwave lasagna, and it was... terrible. <clears throat> terrible? But it is so tasty and so easy to make. You just peel off the plastic film and microwave it. Plastic film? Uh... Hey, if you take the plastic film off before you cook it, mm. This is the best lasagna in the world. Uh, mm, mm, um. Gas bill, water bill. I'll get it. Past due. Please pay immediately or we will send a guy named Bruno over to punch out your lights. That's nice how they don't put pressure on you. I don't understand why I never have any money. I hope you didn't want any because I only got a dozen. <gasps> I understand why I never have any money. What is it, Odie? Oh, that's the lottery ticket I bought. Gee, wouldn't it be nice to win the 27 gazillion dollars? Think how wonderful life would be with that kind of money. What are you telling me, Odie? Oh, it's time for them to draw the winning lottery number. Oh, it's a big waste of time, but I might as well watch. In a moment, we'll be drawing the winning 
winning number in this week's Super Mega Jackpot Lucky 7 Ultra Snazzy Lottery, which is worth 27 <laughs> gazillion dollars. I shouldn't get my hopes up. Hmm. Let me see that ticket. The odds against me winning are astronomical. Still, it would be so wonderful. And now, here's the winning number. <laughs> Give me my ticket back, Garfield. And the winning number is seven, nine, four, five, Ooh. zero, oh. six. <gasps> and the last number is oh. three. <laughs> Gee, I got all 10 numbers. Looks like I won the 27 gazillion dollars. You know, a lot of people, if this happened to them, would go absolutely nuts and start leaping around and dance. And you know what else? Huh? I'm like a lot of people. Yay! I'm rich! Yay! I'm rich! Well, shall we join him? That's right, the winning ticket in the Super Mega Jackpot Lucky 7 Ultra Stazzy Lottery! Oh, that's great, Mr. Arbuckle. We're closed for the weekend right now, but you bring that ticket down here Monday morning, and we'll give you your 27 gazillion dollars. I'll be there. Guys, what shall we do to celebrate? <laughs> More pizza? Great! Let's go to Vito's and buy pizza. No, I have a better idea. Why are you not getting this straight, Mr. Arbuckle? Tell me again, how many pizzas you wish to buy? For the tenth time, Vito, I'm not here to buy pizzas. I want to buy the pizzeria. The whole place! <sighs> how I've dreamed of this moment. I hit the lottery! I won 27 gazillion dollars! Mr. Arbuckle, was that the name? Hi, I'm a reporter with Channel 4. Did I hear you right? You're the big lottery winner? Hey, <laughs> that's me! Vito, name your price, then double it. <laughs> First make pizzas, then talk money. That's right, Sid, the big lottery winner. Get a camera crew down here and we'll do a headline story. Tomorrow, Odie, I'm going on the biggest shopping spree you ever saw. After all, I've got 27 gazillion dollars to spend. Hmm. By the time I'm done here, you may be down to 26. The city was all abuzz today as lottery winner John Arbuckle began spending some of the 27 gazillion dollars he won in this weekend's super mega jackpot lucky seven ultra snazzy lottery. This morning, he purchased seven cars, one for each day of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, Saturday, I like to take half the day off. He also picked out the new home he will purchase. It has 600 rooms. When one gets dirty, I'll just move to another. In his new mansion, I asked him what would be his greatest extravagance. That would be Garfield. <laughs> oh, this rich stuff is so good. <laughs> Come on, Garfield. We're going back to the old house for one last time. Oh, I can't move. I can't walk. I couldn't eat another bite if my life depended on it. Uh, how soon is dinner? Let's go. My new tailor, Armando, is going to meet me there. I'm not going to miss this house. Me neither. How about you, Odie? <laughs> huh? Mr. Arbuckle, I am Armando. I'm a tailor. I am known as Armando the Tailor. Oh, come in, Armando the Tailor. Odie, you can't be serious. You're gonna miss this house? Why? We're gonna live in a mansion with hot and cold running servants. We're gonna have a swimming pool. And like all rich people, we're never gonna go in it. Okay, so this house is the only home you've ever known. So? You think I'm gonna miss it? Miss my favorite corner to sleep in? Miss my favorite window screen to hang on? No! Think of the mill service in the new house. You like it, Mr. Harbuckle? Love it. I want 50 more outfits, Armando the Tailor. Huh? Uh, excuse me. Mr. Harbuckle! Oh, what would you like me to do with your old clothes? Oh, throw them away. There's a trash can out front by the curb. Hello? Oh, 
Mr. Barker. Sorry to bother you at home on the weekend, Arbuckle, but I wanted to make sure you were working on those drawings I need. You what? I said I quit, Mr. Barker. Ugh. I don't have to work for you anymore. I'm rich! Monday morning, I turn in my winning lottery ticket here. My lottery ticket here. Oh! My lottery ticket. It's in that shirt I just told Armando the tailor to throw away. <gasps> Arbuckle, Arbuckle, I can't stand employees who quit. You're fired. Stop! This is a catastrophe. <laughs> John doesn't have catastrophes anymore. He's rich. I made it just in time. Stop! Stop that garbage truck. I need my old clothes back. <laughs> No, you don't, Mr. Arbuckle. They were so out of style. My lottery ticket. It was in with these clothes. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> we're the last stop before they take the trash out to the pier and dump it. <laughs> oh, great. Now some fish is going to get our money. You can tell this is an emergency because I didn't stop for ice cream. in the ocean already? Oh, no. We don't do that anymore. You don't? Nah. It's bad for the environment. Uh, hey. Now we just burn it. Oh. oh, that's the trash we just picked up. Makes a lot of nice smoke, don't it? Well, it was nice being rich while it lasted. <sighs> All the pasta I could eat, finally. But you know, I don't have it so bad. I've got you and Odie, I've got this house. You may find it hard to believe, Garfield, but I would have missed this house. You're right, I find it hard to believe. And I still have my job with Mr. Barker. <laughs> no, I don't have my job with Mr. Barker. Oh, what am I gonna do, I... <laughs> Odie, I don't have time for whatever it is. I quit my job. I... My pants. I took it off when we got home and... Does this mean we're rich again? Oh, just let me have the winning ticket, Mr. Arbuckle. I'd like the 27 gazillion in large bills, please. For a check made out to Vito's Pizzeria. The winning numbers were seven, nine, four, five, <laughs> zero, six, three, and hmm, wait a minute. What's wrong? <laughs> is something wrong? This last number on your ticket isn't a three. It's an eight that was covered by a stain. It smells like it was pizza sauce. I'm sorry, Mr. Arbuckle. This is huh? not a winning ticket. Huh? Excuse me. I think I have the winning lottery ticket. Yes, you do, ma'am. You win the 27 gazillion dollars. Oh, that's nice. I can get Mr. Barker to give me my job back. All it will take is a sincere apology. 
And begging. Oh, don't forget to begging. Well, guys, it looks like we lost 27 gazillion dollars. You know, a lot of people, if this happened to them, would go absolutely nuts and start crying and whining. And you know what else? Huh? <laughs> I'm like a lot of people. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>